This video will be about system design. So we will be designing a very simple system. So this is a very common interview question that you have to design URL shortener. So let me explain what an URL shortener is. Let's say that you get a URL like google.com and you need to shorten the URL and let's say that you shorten it somehow and you give back a shortened form like G, 1, Z or something. So when the user goes to your website, let's say that your website is urlshortener.com. So when the user goes back to the website urlshortener.com slash G, 1, Z, they will be redirected to Google. Or you can say that in a way you don't need the full URL, but only the shortened URL to remember or to use it somewhere. So this saves quite a lot of storage and this is a way to compress the URL. So when the user goes to your website, they get a compression compressed form like let's say in these cases your website is also very like minimal in name for example the website can be c123.co something like that so what you give back to the user is the whole link c13 dot co slash g1z so when the user clicks on the link they will be redirected to google the point is that in case of a very long urls for example if you search something on google you get all the query parameters and everything on on search bar oh and we don't want that we don't want such long uh, urls to remember but we want a shortened form so this is the purpose of a url shortener and whatever its purpose is we don't care about the purpose but we are here to actually design the system so if you want you can pause the video and think for a moment that given such a system, how will you go ahead and design it? And these questions are very common in interviews and especially for beginners. So we'll go ahead and design the system. And this is a very simple system. So let's say that we want to design URL shortener, which simply shortens the URL. So google.com is converted to G1Z and we don't care about the algorithm that we are using to convert this. It is some algorithm in the backend that we are using to convert the URLs. It can be any anything we can simply even use simple digits or whatever works for us but that is not the case here what we want is that how will the system look like so let's design a very simple system we have a server the user connects to the server the user makes a request that i have this url can you shorten it for me the server simply returns a response that yes this is your shortened url and they will get back the shortened URL. So this is a simple request response model. The user makes a request to the server that, hey, this is the URL that I want to shorten. The URL can be a very long URL, google.com slash user is equal to something and search query string is equal to something plus something plus something, like a very long URL that you really want to shorten. So the user comes to our server, they make a request, they get a response that this is the shortened form of the URL. Now, when they come to our server again, they will make another request with the shortened URL that uh, this is the shortened URL. Give me back the original URL or redirect me to the page of the original URL. And don't worry, in one of the next videos, we will be actually coding this system up from scratch. And yeah, uh, that would be great to understand and see this practically. But for now, let's understand the theory behind this. So the user comes to the server, they make a request, they get a response. And what are the different kind of requests that user can make? Number one, they can make a request to shorten a URL. Number two, they they can make a request with the shortened URL to be redirected to the original page. So the system works and it works perfectly, but it works for a small number of requests since we have only one server. So how do we scale this? Something important that should be discussed in the interview and we will look into that later. But for now, let's try to define a correct system first. So where do we store all those information? When the user comes to our system, they make a request to shorten a URL. We actually need to save a mapping. So in the future, when they come back again and make another request with the shortened form, they can get back the original URL. Obviously, that's this is not rocket science. We will use some kind of database. And let's say that for now, we are using the database. What will we store in the database? Obviously, since we are using Postgres, it will have some primary key, updated at, created at timestamp. And we don't care about those. What we care about is the actual URL, which is a varchar, a very big varchar of maybe, let's say, 10. 24 characters or it can be even bigger i don't know but for now let's say that it's a fair care of 1024 size and 
a shortened form of URL. But along with this, we would also need something else and that would be timestamp because URL can be valid for a particular time. So let's say that we also have an expiration timestamp because after the expiration timestamp, if the user tries to make a request, we can go straight ahead and show them that your URL has expired. So let's say that a user makes a request for google.com and we save it in the database as g1x which is its short form with some timestamp and let's say another user comes in they make another request so we have a choice here we can either check that but this string matches with something we have in our database and if it does then we don't have to save it again we can return back the response and if it doesn't we can save it in the database well this works fine and let's say that we save it again in the database because the users can be different now that is again another topic the users need to be authenticated in this case so we know that let's say that a user one makes a request and user two makes a request we can give them back different urls based on the different users so a user can have their own set of urls but again that is something that we don't have to worry about basically what you need to think is that if we get a request with the same url we first need to check in the database if that shortened url corresponding to the re request we got is in our database or not if it is then return it if it is not then create a new short url and return the response back to the user this way we save quite a lot of space now again space is something that that we might need to think about in the interview like what is the maximum characters of the url that we are getting what are the maximum characters in the short url that we are sending to the user so we need to take into consideration all these data size requirements and that is left as an exercise to the user you can calculate the data size requirement based on the character limit the number of urls that you can take and the expiration timestamp so that is an integer which can be like a long integer with let's say 256 bits so you can think about how large of a size it will take. Each character is one byte. So you can calculate that how many characters you are saving in the database. What is the data size limit? of your database so that is left as an exercise to the user let's go ahead and think about scaling the system so obviously we have one server and this won't scale what we can do is that we can have like multiple servers and a load balancer sitting in front of the servers so just always remember to use these boxes in interviews where you have a load balancer and multiple servers sitting behind it so now the system is scaled not one but many users can simultaneously make requests to the system and each of their requests will be redirected to a different server this will be in a round robin fashion so we don't have to worry about one server handling all the requests this also makes our system much more tolerant let's say that one server goes down the request can be redirected to other servers and let's say that they are in different availability zones or in different regions so we don't have to worry about one server going down or out of commission because others will still be working so we will just modify it a little bit now the user makes a request to the load balancer which is our proxy to the server uh, which is a reverse proxy actually to the server and the request goes to the server the server then fetches the response based on some logic it also checks the database and yeah the system works now let's talk about our database using a postgres won't scale much why because postgres is a single large database and in some of the blogs that i've read maybe i will post a link in the description the database is the limit it's the weakest link it's the limit up to which your system can be scaled so if you can scale your database you can easily scale your system and that's because database is the bottleneck so obviously using postgres here won't work because first of all we will have to maintain a single large database and the request the number of requests that we are making to the database won't be fast enough so we can simply replace our postgres database with redis redis is an in-memory cache which is like quite durable and it can have multiple nodes so our load is spread across different servers and our data is spread across different redis caches or redis databases so so we can have a redis cluster with multiple instances and yes our data is duplicated replicated and it is fault tolerant and spread across different redis databases so i think this system will work and this is quite fast enough and also good enough in a beginner interview level system design discussion so i hope you liked the video and we will be making more such videos about system design in the future so consider subscribing to the channel and yeah have a good day